All right, I'm recording this again. Hello, YouTube. Wanted to bring a video today. I've been I got a, I've been getting questions about um, how do I power laptops and game uh, handheld game consoles and whatnot and other various devices like. These little earbuds, you know, they run off a uh, USB-C charger. And, you know, if they didn't have lights on it, how would you know they're charging? Well, what I have here are some cables that I made from a cable that has a 5.5 millimeter by 2.1 millimeter standard DC, male DC plug. And then I took and I spliced and soldered some four millimeter bananas to the other end and so I have a four foot version and then I have a two foot version and what I'm gonna do today is show you how to make one I'm gonna make an intermediate three foot version and like I said I use these for powering laptops I bought this off uh, any auction site that you wanted check out you just look up for universal charging uh, laptop charging jacks and the cool thing about these is on the back side they have a focus they have a standard 5.5 millimeter deep by 2.1 millimeter in diameter DC plug on the back female so you all you do is Plug it into this, and you have a universal charge cord. Plug this into your DC power supply, and you can do testing. I also found a version that has a USB-C male and the same 5.5 millimeter deep and 2.1 millimeter female end. I'm going to have links at the end of this video, or in the description of this video, to, sh to all the parts that you need. It's very simple. You can buy these cables pre-made, but they're not as good as quality, I don't think. And it's no fun, unless you make it yourself, right? So, what you can do is you can go on Google and look up... A DC cable so this has a male 5.5 millimeter by 2.1 millimeter diameter plug on one end and I stripped the wires on this end it was a full cable that had a female end but I clipped it off because I wanted to put banana jacks on it and the other cool thing about this is you can make them custom lengths like I said I have a two foot version of four foot and then I'm gonna do an intermediate so you'll need this cable then you'll need some four millimeter, some four millimeter banana jacks that you can solder to. These are higher quality than you probably need, but I like getting good stuff, so I bought higher quality. So you know, black one, a red one. A little bit of heat shrink tubing, and that's just to you know cover up this abrupt, um, abrupt piece here to kind of you know finish the look a little bit maybe get a little strain relief so and then I've also got some pliers with a rubber band around them to hold the jack because it gets really hot so you'll need those but all right let's get started so another oh on another note the way these are going to be set up is the red will be positive and the red is going to be your center pin or your center contact and white will be ground and that will be the outer the outer metal sleeve you see there some devices will require you to have those reversed so you could reverse the plugs if you wanted to make a custom one for that as well I'll leave that up to you anyway let's get started 
I'm gonna get some liquid flux here. I like liquid flux, it's a lot easier to clean up than paste. What we'll do is we take our pliers and we'll put the jack in here. I'm gonna switch you to microscope camera so you can see what I'm doing a little better. And then the first thing you wanna do, sorry, the first thing you wanna do is get your heat shrink tubing and slide it down. And also make sure if you use this type, you put the cover on first because it's easier to pull the cover over the, the banana, the metal part, than it is to slide it this way because that the end of it's really thin and these are kind of hard. So it'll be harder to put it on. So we'll do that first like that. All right, we're going to go ahead and switch to microscope camera here. Apologize, I'm going to have to reset my camera because it's acting up. All right, we're going to go ahead and slide our wire in here. Just like that. And then we'll get some liquid flux. We'll just flood it in there. That helps solder flow and it will sl it will help the solder flow down inside of the connector and give it a nice solid connection. We're going to grab some solder here. We'll go ahead and flood it. Oh, I forgot. I got to turn my let's turn my fume extractor on. Apologize for the noise. We want to think about our safety. Turn our fume extractor on. All right. We'll let that cool off for a minute and we'll go ahead and clean that off, clean the flux off with some isopropyl alcohol. Just like that. Take it out of the pliers. We'll go ahead and slide the, put the, um, cover on all right and there's one done and now we'll do the next one Pliers come in handy for sure, so you don't have to hold this. The setting up of this is the hardest part. I'm getting your wires to not move. I like to twist the ends of mine. You know, that's a little long. I'm going to clip the end off that. I want it to, I want that white sleeve to touch the edge. So we'll go ahead and just trim those wires down a little bit. Kind of like that. Get our liquid flux again. These cables are very easy to make. And it doesn't take very long. And I've done some Google searching and you cannot find, you know, as quality as, of a cable as this. It's usually just real cheap. Cheap looking.
Don't need quite enough solder in there, but that's okay. We can go back for more. Want to fill that? Fill that up. Just like that. And let it cool off. Make sure our wire is nice and straight, and it is. Go ahead and clean the rest of the flux off. Nice solid joint. Turn our fume extractor off because it's noisy. All right, we'll go to the overhead. We'll go ahead and slide this other um, cover on here. And just like that. And then we'll put our sleeve over here, or I'm sorry, our shrink, heat shrink tubing. Like I said, this is just more for aesthetics. You don't have to do this step. I like to do it because it gives it kind of a finished look. So we're going to go ahead and uh, use our hot air station to shrink this. Shrink this tubing down here. And that's it. And that's how you make that. And as a double check, as a double check, if you wanted, you could take your multimeter and do a continuity test, and you should have the red should be positive, should be the inside, and re uh, black should be ground, and the, the outside metal. Then do that we can t quickly test. I can show you how to do that too. Get out our trusty multimeter here. Put it in uh, continuity mode. We'll hold the red probe on the red banana jack and we'll stick it in the center. And as you can hear we have a beep. Take the ground touch the outside we have a beep so now this will be a center positive cable and then you can take say your USB-C plug it in charge whatever device like I have these earbuds plug it in and charge you can look at your lab power supply see how much current that these are drawing to charge and yeah you can use this to charge any many devices and tests so anyway that's it hope you found that useful i'll leave uh, links in the description for all the parts i used for this and hope you have a good day bye for now